All right, here on the set of Donna and Friends today with Commissioner Terry Brannon. So nice to have you in. Today. I'm absolutely glad to be here. Well, I like to have you come in from time to time okay. just to update us a little bit. And boy, there's been a lot going on since you were in last time. And yes. that was election night, actually, yes. and yes. a special presentation that we had going on for new commissioners. Yes. So, having said that, in case you haven't heard out there, we do have new commissioners, and that would be Trace Rowe and Brent Thompson getting ready to step up on May 4th, and then first meeting, I believe, is, what is that, May 18th, I believe, coming up. Something like that, unless we have a study session beforehand. Right, and that's another thing, let's just start with it from the beginning. Okay. Budget time. Budget time. Talk to me. Oh, <laughs> Budget man. time. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, we, we had a budget workshop uh, two weeks ago uh, at the safety center and we had an opportunity to, the first thing that you want to look at in the budget workshop is what is the physical health of the city of Cushing and the Cushing Municipal Authority. And one of the things that we immediately learned was that our physical health is really good and, and talking about our money health is really good. Uh, city of Cushing, the forefathers well before me have done a marvelous job of setting uh, mechanisms in place by which uh, this city saves money uh, and, and also this city invests money in, in worthwhile projects that are needed to move our community forward. So uh, after we got to that portion, we learned that our revenues were a little bit down and uh, in looking at the projections, it looks like we're going to finish hopefully right on track. Uh, it was, you know, our financials that we received were actually from February. And so those were the most realistic numbers that we had that were firm and concrete. And so the March numbers were yet to be to be tabulated. So uh, again, revenue is going to be down a little bit, but we thought we were going to finish within within budget. Well, in in some of this budget talk that's gone on, and also the most recent uh, commissioners meeting, the city meeting. Uh, let's talk about the subject of the pool. Okay. Well, you know, we were really uh, we were really taken back at the budget workshop when we learned that the, the swimming pool itself initially was set up as a break-even operation. Uh, so again, it's a quality of life uh, amenity in Cushing, and so something that's really important to not just people in our own community, which is first and foremost, right. but to the secondary visitors, which are folks from out of town who who enjoy the water park. But one of the things that we learned was that through the break-even process, that began to really take a dip. And last year, we had to subsidize the aquatic operations by about fifty thousand uh, dollars. You know, first and foremost, the expenses associated with the aquatic center really center on personnel or personal services, as it's identified in the budget. <laughs> and one of the things that the city manager was very clear on, and I, I asked the question, was that is there a mandatory staffing minimum that must be met each time the aquatic center is open? And the answer to that question is yes. And so you have about anywhere between 10, I believe it's 10 to 15 people working at any given time stationed at different portions of the aquatic center. And that's mandated by the, the Oklahoma Department right. of Health. So it's not something that we control. Right. But it also it's good to, because having a presence like that allows us to provide for a safe fun environment. But, uh, you know, we learned that we're going to have to make some, some tough decisions. When I say tough, we're talking about raising prices of the aquatic center. And we did that the other night. We raised them just a little bit. And I think one of the things we've asked staff to do is come back with some uh, ADM numbers, some average daily attendance numbers, so we can see just what the uh, impact is cost-wise for the the new prices. Right, that some age presented. break breakdowns. So uh, absolutely. Yeah, because that's part of the admission price is different for different age. It is. Brackets, it is. So. It is. And you know they have pump, punch passes and things like that, but we just really attached on to the to the admission price, and so. Uh, we'll see what those look like next year and kind of see, you know, kind of see where we're at. And in talking about uh, the budget and the pool, you know, one of the things that I talked about at the council meeting the other night was really uh, beginning to wrap your mind around a priority-based budget. You know, one of the things that I've learned, and I, ha I haven't heard it spoken here at the City of Cushing, but one of the things that I've learned through my studies, at, my independent studies as a city commissioner is, is that most communities, when there is a perceived financial crisis or some financial problem, uh, it's really not necessarily a, a financial crisis, it's a crisis of priority. And one of the things that I would like to see this city begin to do is to begin a, a priority-based budget process which requires citizen engagement, 
commission engagement, staff engagement. And so all three of those things coming together to form a better budget for Cushing. Uh, looking at the properties, what do people want to fund? You right. know, using the aquatic center as an example, if people felt like this year that streets were more important or other things were more important, and that fifty thousand dollars that's used to subsidize the aquatic center should be placed over here, and that's what people in this community said we needed to do, then high probability you'd obviously make some operational changes at right. the aquatic center. You right. might lessen the time that it's open. Or you may have it open seven days a week, but less than the, the operations hours versus it's not open on Tuesday or Thursday or Saturday or something right. like that. So, Well, uh, citizen input, I think, is crucial to all facets of, of the city. I mean, it's the taxpayers putting the money into everything. That it, it really is. And I, and I have to say this because it's the truth. The citizen engagement in Cushing is very lethargic. Yes. Uh, that's sad because we have great media partners who come out and cover those meetings and, and provide, I think, really good feedback to the community as to what's going on. But, you know, if you're there and you're present and you're hearing what's being said, it, it offers you an opportunity to hopefully go back and process what's being said and, and offer some input. You know, there are places that citizens can have input. And so I would personally like to see us move from a, a position of being lethargic to a position of active engagement. You know, and, and I think that's going to come more as we do. You see more of the Cushing Conversations events. Right. I think that uh, the men that serve on, on the city commission uh, coming up will be open to going out into the community. Uh, I think it's part of a, a 360, 360-degree 360 uh, evaluation process to give people an opportunity to truly evaluate the job yes. that you're trying to do for them by taking, taking government to them. You know, one of the things that I've, I've learned throughout my, my time on the commission is, is that we're, we're all going to be different and have different views politically. Mm -hmm. You and I don't share the same sure. views politically. Uh, you may be a libertarian. I may be a Democrat. I may be a Republican. You may be an independent. But at the end of the day, we're all for good governance. Right. And, and that's, that's what I really wish uh, we, could, we could bring to the table here in terms of citizen engagement. So you're watching this. Budget meetings that are open. We have another budget workshop shop that's open, and then the city meetings, the regular ones every month, every they're month. open. Yes. If we could get more of an engagement, you yes. know, that's part of why we stream it also. Yes. Is so that if people aren't comfortable coming down, mm -hmm. that's what we want to see. And mm -hmm. I think in a number one mm -hmm. scenario, but. If they will just watch it streaming and learn and then engage with your commissioners. I agree. Engage I agree. with your commissioners, be that through email or phone call or what have you, but engage with all of your commissioners on what it is you see going on I, I if you can't make it down to a city meeting. Well, I want to um, jump a little bit and I want to talk about something that went into executive uh, session here at the last meeting and that was the purchase of some property on Harmony Road and what it's going to be used for and what the outcome of that may have been. Okay. Well, many of you know that uh, at, at one of our study sessions we learned that the electric distribution portion of the City of Cushing or the Cushing Municipal Authority uh, has run out of space. Uh, they have trucks and materials that are stored in, in various parts of the city including their own main headquarters which they have completely outgrown. And so we learned that there's a need there to, to provide them with a one, one facility in one yes. place so everything is centralized. It's going to improve efficiency in terms of, of response to, to needs, to, to response to maintenance issues right. and things like that. And I have to say this is a no-frills building. Oh, it's a no-frills building. No frills. No frills. Yeah. There's, no, there's no frills there. And, and so trying to find adequate spacing, and I'm, Commissioner Ross brought up the fact that he thought it would be awfully advantageous to us to have this facility. Uh, inside of the city, mm -hmm. and and I certainly agree with that, and echoed that echoed that comment. But the concern was was is there somewhere that you could find in the city to put a building like this, which they thought would take about a square block, just right. because there's so many trucks and all the stores that they have and things like that. Well, we were able to find some property out behind Oklahoma Oil with Cementers, which is out on Harmony Road, which is adjacent to, they're right adjacent to the sports complex. I think that's a great location. Yeah. And if you don't know where the sports complex is, it's just directly behind the current high school campus. Right. And then just south of the sports complex is the brand new Cushing Middle School. So uh, what a great area to, to relocate to. You have city property right there next door. Infrastructure's already in place. Yeah. So a lot of things that you would have to do uh, can can be already done or, right. or already done, but you'd have a lot of other work to do that, that you could do, but it's adjacent to a city facility. So 
What the commission did was they voted to authorize the city manager to begin working on a contract uh, with Oklahoma Oil Well Cementers to hopefully get that property purchased. Well, I think that's great news. Now, I've got, I want to bring up something. To, it's kind of totally off of anything that we're saying, but um, quickly, what's your thoughts on food trucks and uh, getting it to where an ordinance would allow those in? Well, you know, I, I've heard a little bit of discussion about this uh, throughout the community. I don't have much experience or knowledge about food trucks. I do know that uh, the church that I attend, uh, they bring food trucks in uh, to, to reach people that, that are not necessarily churched. Uh, as, a, as a means of an outreach uh, and to create some positive conversation because great things happen around food. Right. We know. When we break bread together. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we know that great things happen, yeah. around, happen around the table. If that yes. table is out in the parking lot or Absolutely. that table is in a home, we know great things can happen around well, food. Well, and so. I think food trucks could add the spice of variety. They could. And you know what I could immediately envision is, is having something like that in downtown Cushing where you bring people downtown and businesses are Maybe open. they have a designated day. Oh, and absolutely. They come on. Yeah. Uh, quickly, I know we're running out of time, but I'd like to um, have you address lastly uh, the recent passing of uh, Adam Hart with the police department. Well, you know, a uh, sad day for Cushing. A uh, sad day for Cushing when Adam passed away. Adam, uh, when he came here in 2000, I was a part of the team that that uh, helped interview him and get him here and, and then for the next ten and a half weeks I was assigned to be his field training officer so uh, was able to able to develop a good relationship with him um, and one that uh, has lasted beyond my time at the police department so yes. certainly extend my condolences to he and his family. I think family. the community is, is very very much in a state of grief right now. I agree. I agree. Well, Commissioner Brennan, I appreciate you coming in so much today Thank you. and visiting with us. We're going to talk a whole lot more. Oh, We're going to come back and we'll be back.